Thank you for being here. And we're inviting you to join us at 2 o'clock for a media interaction here. here today reflects Nigeria's and indeed President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration's unwavering commitment to the ideals of regional integration as espoused by the founding fathers of the ECOWAS community. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Let me also thank His Excellency Mr. Hasumi Masudu, the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Niger and the Chairman of the Board of Governors of EBID for his stewardship in the last 12 months. Honourable Ministers and colleagues, uh, honourable ministers and colleagues in the federal cabinet, members of the diplomatic corps who have taken time off from their busy schedules to attend this important event, this is indeed a strong signal of our collective commitment to EBID, the common regional financial institution in its enduring quest to promote economic development and integration among member states of the community. And we are truly pleased and honoured to have you all, distinguished governors. I take a little time out to specifically recognize and thank the Minister for Agriculture of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Aldo Ogbe. I think it's extremely symbolic that he's here. One of the things we have in common, one of the assets we have in common is our agricultural endowment. And I think his being here is very significant. I'd like to recognize him especially. Thank you very much for coming. Sir. This meeting presents an opportunity to discuss the various issues of development in our sub-region mindful of the fact that past economic growth has not been inclusive. It is time for a shift to a new model that ensures that opportunities from economic growth and development can be enjoyed and shared by more people in the sub-region. However, the journey towards facilitating economic development in our sub-region has a number of challenges in line with our ECOWAS vision, and these we must address. I will mention just a few. Firstly, finance ministers must endeavour to speak about the radical economic transformation that will no doubt take us on a path to a better life for all citizens in our community. Secondly, we need to prioritise industrialisation, especially through labour-intensive manufacturing and agricultural processing to promote job creation. In addition, conscious emphasis needs to be placed on our agriculture to improve our food security and to derive more value from all of our endowments, especially the sea, by hosting the ocean economy, as well as our land endowments. Potentially, these areas also provide investors with profitable investment opportunities in our community. Equally critical is the work that's being done to promote regional integration in our sub-region. On our part in Nigeria, efforts are already fully underway to radically transform the Nigerian economy in a manner that will shift the age-old emphasis away from oil as the main source of revenue in our country. Diversification and domestic revenue mobilization through improved tax revenue are therefore ongoing. Without doubt, the signaling effect, coupled with the positive externalities that would be generated, will have a significant impact on our regional economy. Infrastructural development remains top of the agenda to ease the movement of goods and people and services across our communities. Thank Your Excellency Professor Yemi Asubaji, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for attempting to personally attend this occasion in spite of his very, very high uh, charged schedule. Our profound gratitude also goes to the Minister of Finance of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Honorable Kimi Adjosi, and our staff for the superb manner in which the meeting has been organized. Thank you. Your Excellency, 
Evan applauds the resilience of the Nigerian economy in defense of adverse shocks that plunge it into a recession. According to the recently concluded Article 4 consultation report by the IMF, the impact of falling oil prices as well as reduced production of oil have dipped the Nigerian economy into a recession. This commenced in 2016 with growth contracting by about 1.5%. And annual inflation also reached almost 18.6%, reflecting increases in electricity and fuel prices, a weaker NERA, and accommodating monetary conditions. Happily enough, the economy seems to be gradually recovering with the non-oil sector returning to growth in the first quarter of 2017. The approval of the 2017 budget is also expected to restore policy certainties. Real GDP growth is projected to increase marginally to about 0.8% in 2017 from minus 1.5% in 2016 and further strengthen to about 1.9% in 2018. Your Excellency, Honorable Governors, it is no secret that Nigerians are very, very resilient people. And we have no doubt that with the approval and signing of the 2017 budget, policy certainties will be curbed, and the country, through its focus on the non-oil sector and other economic diversification initiatives, will in the very near future experience more positive economic growth. First, uh, permit me on behalf of the President uh, of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, and on behalf of the government and people of Nigeria to welcome you all to Abuja for this, for this 15th ordinary session of the Board of Governors meeting of the ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development. The bank has, since its auspicious founding, proved to be one of the wisest and most far-sighted decisions taken by ECOWAS since its inception, a sub-regional financial institution whose primary mission is to contribute to the integration and economic development of the 15 member states of our community by investing in and supporting both the private and both private and public sectors. This was clearly what the sub-region required then, but perhaps more so now. And the bank must be commended for its catalytic role in many game-changing investments in energy, in infrastructure, and even banking. In energy, the desert connection to link Nigeria, Bene, and Togo, which was co-financed by the ADB and the BOAD. In infrastructure, the bank contributed the funding of TINAPA in Cross River State of Nigeria. TINAPA remains one of the most visionary projects designed to make Cross River State an international commercial and tourism hub. The bank also supported an, a major electricity project in Conakry in Guinea, a road link between Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, and guaranteed a 10 billion CFA bond issue for the port of Dakar and the creation of an investment bank in Benin. The bank also demonstrated remarkable resourcefulness at the height of the many conflicts in our sub-region to establish a conflict resolution fund but I must say that the role of the bank today is even more crucial, and we all know why. But just to reemphasize the point, recent trends in global and economic development have had a significant impact on local and regional economies. The economies of our various countries have faced falling government revenues on account of commodity price slumps, declining economic growth, and the challenge of creating jobs on a scale that can cope with our rising populations. All of these and more have translated into greater pressure on governments to urgently diversify our resource-dependent economies. The more than three million citizens of our various countries are looking up to us for policies and interventions that will break the hold of poverty and inequality on their lives. But of even greater moment is the fact that the sub-region, like the continent, is a youthful one. 70% of our population is under 35, with all the implications for providing education and livelihoods that that would mean. So without question, the challenges of today call for greater creativity and foresight in supporting and making investments in our member In these days of transparency, 
I'm sure you know why. <laughs> Before the social media goes awash with what they do not know. Thank you. So we have um, two quick announcements. We will be telling you 